This is the only generation of the Ford Fiesta ST. So a very hot, small hatch. And is it a true sports car? Let's find out together the answer to this question on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. Today with Thomas, an exterior, interior, and I can promise you a wild driving performance. In full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. Looking at the front here, in general the new Fiesta generation already looks quite sporty with this fish mouth front grille. Here with the comp structure in the ST, also with a special logo, stronger lower bumpers and those headlights with a beautiful daylight running signature. Optional also available in LED trim. I think they could, you know, just say, ah, let's include that already from the ST, but there's still some extra policy, of course, we know that from a lot of manufacturers. But overall, I think a very streamlined design. Four meters and four or 13 foot two is the total length. You can see here we have the three door version. It looks a little bit sportier, but you can also get the five door version. Ford is one of the very rare manufacturers nowadays left that offer both three door and the five door variant. You start with 17 inch rims. Those ones here, the optional 18 inch red Brembo brake calipers. And I can tell you those brakes are really, really good. I can tell you in the driving part later on. Um, there will be some situations where I will need them, I can promise you. <laughs> Other than that, it's rather a conservative, evolutionary design with the Fiesta. Pretty thick door handles right there. And we also have this um, nice option that you have this protection right there, a rubber pad protection when you open the door. It flips out automatically, and flips in again when you close the door. And then here this three door design of course with no door right there if you're just with two people that's actually fine other than that of course the five door always comes handier what do you think about the design in this new generation the fiesta has more horizontal drawn taillights that gives it a little bit more stance on the road then the st comes with a special logo right there some kind of diffuser very small one in this part and the real deal here with the exhaust tips golden galvanizing around it very interesting and I mean it doesn't look too much exaggerated but you can already see some of the sportiness so overall if you take a look at design you see yeah this works you know also in your neighboring surrounding but I can tell you it will be different when we drive this car yeah looking forward to it <laughs> but we first finish up with the engines and also with the interior and price preview 13,000 about in Germany is a Fiesta the normal one this one here then 22. So yes, definitely almost double the price in a normal Fiesta. But then again, if you compare it to other sports cars, it's relatively cheap. And here we go with the engine. It's a 1.5 liter with 200 horsepower for a small hatch here. Wow, that is the acceleration figure, 6.5 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. If you get the performance pack, you can also get a limited slip differential for the front wheel drive car and also a launch control. Wow, they really worked massively on the air uh, supply here for that engine. And it does need a lot of, but then you see, hey, one, two, three. Three cylinder engine. That's also one of the special things they did here. 200 horsepower from three cylinders. You know, that's on the one hand, of course, amazing engineering work. And I can tell you, it does have a lot of performance. But of course, you have to, you know, raise the question, is it okay to have so much horsepower output from rather small displacement and less cylinders? I'm not so sure about that. But performance-wise, this one is definitely on top.
this is the key with the ST logo. You can not only do it here, the opening closing, also put your hand right there. And then it closes, also the mirror is flipping in then, really nice, and put your hand inside the door handle and then the car is opening again. And then you can also see right there, close up again, this protects the door. I think it's a really clever idea and automatically goes back and forth. Then the inside of the door, this is all hard plastics material. Where you put your hand, however, you got some fabric use. So all pretty like kept simple and standard. Also, you cannot put so many things, maybe, you know, for your glasses, a, co a cover or something at the inside of the door. Then we got a special Ford Performance badge in the lower part, an entry badge right there. And the most special things here in the ST are steering wheel and seats. The steering wheel, blue contour stitches on the inside, flat bottom ST logo, and it's also way thicker than the normal one. And you have this carbon fiber design right there around the dashboard. The top part here, by the way, is from Soft Touch. And really the highlights are those Recaro sports seats for the ST. They look really amazing, especially here with the blue stitching. So much side support right there. You can also adjust the um, lower part of the seat, the, the back part, how it goes up and down, and also the front part, how it goes up and down. That all works manually. So an option, you can also get Alcantara on the inside, but then they use some leather on the outside, and I'm not exactly sure if it's leather red or real leather. It's um, hard to find out at all. But this one, the pure fabric variant, I think will also do fine or even better because um, this fabric will stay even a little bit cooler than the Alcantara in summertime. Also really nice stitching here, blue color again at the, um, you know, at the head restraints. And let's get inside. Of course you have you know, a little barrier right there. And wow, this is really, um, you're super caged in. This is really a notch life, a racing seat. So in the lower part and also here in the higher part, you held absolutely Tight. And at you know first seating position is actually then quite good if it's comfortable. But I can already tell you right now that on the long term run, at least for me, maybe it's not a problem when you're a little bit smaller. At least for me, it's really you know a little bit too tight in the lower area, and then I also get lower back pain. So you know if you don't want it that sporty, maybe stick with the ST line because you can also get normal sports seats then, which allow you to move a little bit freely. But if you are really taking this car onto the racetrack and you really want to, you know, sit tight, maybe you're not that tall, then this one here also will do a good job. And one meters 86 or six foot one, leaves me plenty of headroom. There's no problem in this vehicle. And then again, the steering wheel, really great grip, thick and perfect control. You can also control in height and also in reach. So you can also find a good position overall. I mean, it is somewhat a typical seating position as in a small hatch but then again those seats they are really special and we've seen similar stuff in the uh, recently in the toyota yaris grmn was it grmn i think so or gmnr grnm i think grand racing master new i think something like that you should check out this review to compare also brian did that recently and this is the interior overview here soft touch as i explained earlier on that part then again, the look at the thick steering wheel, great sporty control, I can tell you and show you while driving. It starts the basic Fiesta with a very small uh, infotainment system uh, without the big screen, then, then one above, 6.5. It's also standard with the Fiesta ST. And this one then is the optional 8-inch, the top one, Ford Sync 3. And there you also have this map where you can browse in very easily has a good response time, so CPU-wise it's quite good. You have other possibilities, you can Bluetooth connect your phone or then also with the um, Apple CarPlay, for example, putting in the cable, but then it's not possible to use Apple CarPlay and the car internal GPS at the same time, and that is a software fail. They should definitely fix it. And in the lower part, you still have classic climate vents here for the strength of the vents and also for controlling the, you know, the, the temperature, um, not really in an electronic way. It does the job, it's somehow simple, but I like that you not only can get heated seats, but also heated steering wheel. Instrument with a small digital screen in the middle part. Yes, a launch control is available if you have that performance pack. Other than that, rather classic layout. 
So here you can put some stuff right there or also connect your phone right there for the uh, CarPlay for example. And then this six speed manual gearbox, wow. It's so crisp to put the gears and that's really a lot of fun while driving. I can already tell you right now, um, they really managed to do that very well. You get a good feedback, not too much of resistance, but just, you know, like click, click, really a lot of fun. Then the lower middle console, you yeah, can deactivate the ESC. Um, but you have this limited, limited slip differential that also helps you. Driving modes, normal, sport and race. But well, the race mode also deactivates the ESC. And since this is the manual gearbox car, it, those driving modes won't change too much actually. Here you can put your key. Then adaptive cup holders. They hold different sizes of bottles tight. This I think also well done. Classic handbrake, of course, you know, when I'm doing those WRC runs with this car, I always use that. And in the rear part you have another storage area and also another usb for example you know rear passenger charging for example so now let's flip the seat and let's get in the rear and you can see um you have to move the seat backward like this a little bit or like this then you can slide it as soon as you have put back the rear part then it doesn't move anymore so push it forward and let's see if i can get myself in there not too easy, of course, the 5 door version comes handier. Mm, it's a nice seat design here, also in the rear, in the sporty style. Um, let's see, what about the leg room when I would be driving? Whoa, like this, yeah, that doesn't really fit. So my knees are hitting the back part of the seats when I'm having the seat in this way. And the reason for that is this sport seat here is so thick. You can see it right there. And the normal seat, I mean, the Fiesta has more legroom in the new generation that has changed, but it's not the package king in this small segment. And you lose this kind of legroom than with the performance seat here. So in the ST line, for example, you would have way more legroom in the rear, both in the three door and the five door version, that's for sure. So here, this is really a two people car. You have Isofix in the rear, so you can fit uh, child seats here, for example. That would work then. Um, and well, Headroom wise is actually no problem in this respect. I can very well sit in the rear here. So performance blue on the exterior color, but what's inside the hatch here? Here we go. And well, there's a high loading sill. That's quite often with hatch vehicles. Below that you can have, you know, in this case, a Bang & Olufsen sound system, actually quite decent sound. And that's the space you have there. 220, sorry, 292 liters. This is a cabin trolley that does fit in here like this. Well, not not like this, just like this or like this. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much standard for this hatch segment. You can also flip the seats right there in a one third, two third split, and then you can load through longer things right there. Um, not bad, but also not, uh, not, mag mag not magnificent. Let's take it that way. So welcome to the driving part here, Thomas's driving lounge with a Fiesta ST and I can tell you, this one here, <laughs> that was the launch control. So wow, a launch control for a manual driven car, that's pretty amazing and you just stand still and the launch control gets activated and I really push down the throttle all the way and like this we were at 50 kilometers an hour and you know there's also the area where this car is really extremely fast and usually just for front wheel drive and 200 horsepower all the wheels would have been turning but the launch control really helps you to control this power also when doing this start and now we can also drive a little bit faster wow and well when you're not using the launch control but you are in a, in a corner like you know like here now then you also have with the performance pack which is included in this very test vehicle the limited slip differential so that helps you that you don't have so much wheel spin in the front especially when you accelerate out of a corner and you maybe apply a little bit too much throttle the suspension is really stiff it glues to the road the steering wheel thick and big <laughs> and that really helps to control the vehicle 
wow, this is a pure race car. There is no compromise. Those optional Recaro Sport seats, they really keep us very tight in the seats here. And yeah, I got some lower back pain right there already. Uh, but as I said earlier, if you want to really race this car and want to use it on the racetrack, then those seats will really help you. Um, otherwise, maybe stick with the normal standard ones. They are already quite sporty. But here, you see my body is, isn't moving at all. So this is really helpful then when you're really pushing the vehicle. And Ford really manages to give you a very natural steering feel here. So I'm in perfect control. I don't have to move the steering wheel that much. So it has a, a progressive characteristic. But at the same time, it's not artificial at all. It really feels natural to control. A little bit of feeling like the rally cars now, like, you know, Corsica. <laughs> that is, well, now second gear, tight corner, pushing it through, limited slip differential. Really gives me good feeling, so you don't have this um, effect that the car steers itself that you lose steering feel because you have the acceleration wheel, the front wheels. This is really amazing. Uh, so from all the small racing cars I've driven, this one is so well controlled, this one is so aggressive. Uh, if you compare a Polo GTI to it, you know, to use it in an everyday driving and have a lot of comfort still, the other Polo GTI is for sure better. So, um, you know, the, the overall better all around the car for sure but this one here is small car hot hatch racing without any compromise so yes you have less comfort but you have this pure racing style and Holger is probably thinking is am I sitting next to Colin McRae now <laughs> Yeah, usually you have to say like two left and now three right, two left, one one left, three right. <laughs> I can I can still handle that myself, so at least for now. Wow, what acceleration this 200 horsepower that is applied on rather low weight here does a perfect job. So, I mean, I've just been driving a Kia Stinger V6 and this one here feels like it has more punch. Six and a half seconds, the acceleration figure to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour is also pretty impressive for a small vehicle and also the brakes, you know, really well dimensioned brakes and then you have this low weight again from the small car segment. So, you know, I just had a one situation in the city. There were some pigeons flying to the road very unexpectedly and I really hammered the brakes and so I could save the pigeons as well. So if you have a discussion with your wife maybe saying, it, ah, let's get a normal Fiesta or Fiesta Active and you say, mm, could we please get a Fiesta S ST? Then you just say, you know, because I want to save some pigeons and cats running on the road, that's safer because of the big brakes and stuff, you know, just giving you some arguments here. And of course, you know, the main argument is what I'm doing right here. Wow, this car really glues to the road. Nice sound as well. I think this is probably the raciest, the sportiest, and the best sporty behavior I've ever experienced in the, in the small car segment overall. This is pure perfection as for the racing side. Again, while my lower back is hurting, <laughs> you have to be aware of that. So um, if you have no problem with that, and you really seek for something without any sporty compromise and you say a Focus RS that's too boring for me I want something sportier something racier because this one is lighter has better handling than in the compact car segment I'm really totally flashed by the uh, you know racy feeling this car has and what an amazing road we have here as well this is so much fun to drive I can tell you and you're, again, you're so much in control. There are some other, um, you know, bigger sports cars where you are not that well in control, for example, you know, and here you have the feeling you are 100% in control, really precise, you're not, you're not sweating because, yeah, I mean, it really um, 
you know challenges you with the speed and stuff but since it's not, not not so heavy and you have this great controlled feeling and it's also not rather small you know it's no problem then to get along very well and you know here for example overtaking cyclists and stuff it's not narrow at all so that is really a lot of fun to drive and you can really concentrate on enjoying your drive uh, you know rather than saying I know not fitting on the right side not fitting on the left side wow just wow this is all the positive race side just shortly about the downsides of that yes comfort it is hurting definitely in those performance seats consumption you can drive the car with 10 liters on one kilometers but even if you don't really push it so the consumption here is super 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 high and if you then push it like I just did 13 liters on one kilometers that is definitely the big downside of this vehicle Well, and since driving this vehicle is so much fun, I want to tell you something more about driving. Just, you know, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> because one very interesting aspect is, I said earlier, we only have three cylinders here. But funny enough, sometimes we only have two because this vehicle here is equipped with a COD technology, cylinder on demand. Zylinder Abschaltung would be the correct German word or German lesson for today. <laughs> and Usually it happens when you, for example, you know, rolling, you know, like this. And then when you maybe just on the throttle, just very gently, for example. Um, so then only two cylinders are being used. And, uh, you know, when you're going straight and don't need so much acceleration. Do you feel it? Well, I, re I really haven't felt it. Maybe sometimes you um, you can feel it when you're... And you're really paying a lot of attention but when you're for example going down the hill sometimes you know um, everything is basically shut off and then you don't don't feel a difference there uh, if the one cylinder is going on or off so I mean we also you know, among journalists had some discussions about, about this technology as well and I already said that I didn't feel it too much for example here now I'm just very you know gently on the throttle fourth gear and hmm, I'm, I'm not really sure if it's maybe that it takes like a, you know very short moment that the third cylinder is being activated again but I couldn't really differentiate if that's the cylinder that is changed or if it's just you know the, the throttle input and since the car has abundance of power the throttle inputs were actually quite good the funny thing was when we do, were doing car to car shots earlier, uh, you know, um, you could actually, not, not me from the inside, but when you're on the outside and going with the same speed in the car, then you can obviously hear when one cylinder has been activated or deactivated. That's also a you know, really, really funny thing. The Fords, um, and, you know, they have this technology, of course, because it brings down the consumption on paper. So this is the uh, this is the, the, the goal of the whole thing here. Um, if it really brings down consumption effectively, I really doubt that. Uh, you can, of course, drive it with some, some less consumption. That I also want to add because I've been driving this car and, uh, now a little bit longer even. And what I could score ultimately was as low as 8 liters on 100 kilometers. So you remember um, that 10 should be something like a good average if you, if you also have city driving uh, in there. 12 if you really push it. 8 is also possible as, you know, when you're for example steady speed motorway or uh, countryside roads. And then you can, you know, also score those figures and they then come in a region what would also the normal Fiesta consume. So with other engines in the Fiesta, you know, we had the manual gearbox with a little stronger engine, the automatic gearbox with this uh, one liter engine. And with we always got something between seven and nine liters. And so it shows that with the bigger engine here, you can actually reach the same consumption figures than with the smaller Fiesta engines. But since the horsepower output is bigger, you can even more boost 
this consumption up in a liter, in a, in a liter way if you really use all of the power you have right here. And yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's the thing. And I think it shows once more that downsizing it is not really the, um, you know, the, the right solution. However, I mean, for such a vehicle, a 1.5 liter engine in general is not too small. But then again, if you think about 200 horsepower, I think the displacement figure is still too small. Just in a technology sense speaking and also maybe durability sense, um, if you just focus on the performance, then again, as I said, uh, there's, there's no doubt that this one here has a really great performance. So as we had some um, racy countryside roads before, I picked some um, you know, more city-like uh, surrounding here for this region we are driving quite close to Nice today in um, uh, the Alpes Maritime. So bienvenue, we see. Well, greetings to our French viewers as well. And suspension-wise, as long as the road is good also, it's perfectly fine, but definitely you feel a difference to a base Fiesta that you get more, more, more bumps you know, when, when the road is not that well built as it is here. So um, there again, you have to think about if you really want that very sporty approach in your everyday driving for sure but if you get the ST you surely want that other than that if you enjoyed this one here just for watching and saying wow great sporty stuff but I want a little bit cheaper and also a little bit more comfortable you could also step back then to the ST line without this very powerful engine you can also check out the full review of the ST line here on Autogefuel we will link the video in the video description as well as the video to the base Fiesta with the automatic gearbox and in that base video from the original launch of the new generation we also saw show you different trims also on the interior all the infotainment systems you have so then you can get a complete overview of everything um, connected to this um, new fiesta generation so um, and one last thing then here to um, you know to wrap up the city behavior and stuff view to the a pillar i mean you got this separate window there it's not really that helpful so the a pillar is then quite voluminous by by that way we also have a blind spot monitor and the side mirrors that is helping us you know when we're getting overtaken here in the three door it's actually good with the view in the five door the view is a little bit um, uh, more limited of course i would always go for the five door because it's just handier to load in and out things maybe additional on the rear bench and of course that people can easily get in and out uh, you can just have the car more flexible. But on the exterior, the three-door always looks a little bit sportier. So I think it was also fitting that we had the ST here today in the three-door. And to the rear, you can actually very well see where the car is ending. It's still a very short car. But if you want, you can always have this rear-view camera as well. Um, that is then helping you when you're you know, not really fit to really see you know what's what's behind me a review camera is always helpful no, you know, no matter what the size of the car so there's always a question about the extra policy and one thing I criticized about this extra policy is the autonomous emergency brake so it's city brake is not included in the standard equipment and not even in the mid trimmer not even in the ST so you always have to get them at one extra and I think this basic safety feature should always be included um, basically in every vehicle here today so those who will know about the um, non-racing facts about this vehicle because you're always using them you know when you when you own this car and would say goodbye now from the driving part And now to our conclusion here for today with the Ford Fiesta ST. A likeable sporty exterior, especially here in the performance blue color. The interior, of course, if you compare it to the previous generation, a big step forward. So they have done a lot there and it's actually quite uh, well done. Of course, you don't have too much room is it? in it. You know, it's a small car and the package is not the best one. And the comfort, well, you know, especially with the optional performance seats, you lose some comfort definitely on the long term run. It's not this everyday driving life hot hatch in this case, but it is without compromise. To me, the raciest hot small hatch there is. And I think also considering the price, 
one of the best price performance sports cars overall because with this small one you can have so much fun you don't you know have to spend like triple the money on the Porsche uh, if you if you don't want so already with, already with this one you are really ready to race and I think that's the very special thing about this car bearing in mind that the consumption is very very high what do you think tell me your opinion in the comment about this very vehicle and also tune in next time to Autogefühl.